And so when we look at the uh, Declaration of Independence where we have uh, merciless savages, why did they put that line in there? It has a lot of effect on the thinking of Native American people. In the traditional teachings of our Diné, we are told that they came as a group from the uh, first world and the second world and finally into this, the third world. As they lived in the uh, previous worlds, there are stories of how they lived in a various, among various group of people. And uh, there was, at times, they, when they had to eventually separate themselves or move on to the next world, they had experienced uh, either social uh, persecution or various forms of persecution and that from the other people and so they had to move on. And so the uh, story about uh, them moving on and eventually coming and breaking away from that other uh, group of people and then coming west is very important to understand. And uh, you have to really, really listen to the, uh, the history of the journey from coming from one level and coming to another level and then finally to, to this level. And beyond this, there's another, another level. The uh, practice of living a certain way that would be satisfactory to the holy people was something that the early Diné were seeking as they came west. The ways of our people is that we've explained that, that there were all of these different uh, clan uh, families and clan system and that that uh, they organized. And every clan had in it as leaders the first man and the first woman. Now, in that particular setting, it was not that the uh, first man or first woman were man and wife. Sometimes it would be that there was a man that was uh, a special type of leader, and there was a woman. And so it was a staying in practice with the idea of male and female in all, all of our traditional teachings in every aspect of uh, the things that we are told. And so the uh, governing approach that our people used that every clan family was responsible for their clan members and that every issue in that that might be of the serious nature that would affect other members of the clan family would have to be resolved by first man and first woman. And the uh, teachings of our people is that uh, every clan group is responsible for just their clan. They can't really infringe on other clans and that. And so the uh, concept today of uh, the way the government is set up in a nas national setting is uh, a type of government in that that maybe originated with Native American people and which is that uh, you are as an individual you are a sovereign person in it that you have the uh, responsibility to make the choices that would probably affect you just individually by yourself that the whole governing system is based on individual behavior and then when you apply it to the whole society of either clan families or various communities and that, it is that people are responsible for the, uh, the actions of one another toward each other in that particular clan family setting or in a community setting. And so when you go way back in the, in the American history, the uh, Constitution and the uh, idea of the Declaration of Independence is all based on actually traditional Native American types of government, forms of government. And the um, founders on that looked to see what type of government that they could really be serious about developing. And so in the history books, of course, you find people like Ben Franklin and that, that went out among the Native people and saw their particular type of government where they had representative type of uh, government and that that was uh, very interesting to Ben Franklin and also the idea that the uh, individual had a great amount of rights in that and that they were responsible for their uh, their action and behavior and so that was the concept that the the ne government was established on when they moved out here into this part of the continent and this is why they were such of uh, an influence to the other people that became the ne themselves is that they would teach them correct principles of behavior and then allow them to govern themselves. And uh, this has been something that uh, a lot of times in this modern setting in that we have an issue of sovereignty.
in our tribal government, many times our tribal leaders, uh, they forfeit the uh, sovereignty on various subjects of interest. They waver some of our sovereignty as Native American people. And of course that isn't right because it seems like the tribal governments may, may want to have uh, the whole control of the sovereignty issues and that. While the, the reality of the way that this issue of sovereignty worked among our Dine traditionally was that it was an individual sovereignty that you had the right to make choices and the right to choose. And so that was uh, the way that the system was set up. But even today, you can see the uh, effects of it when you go to any of these uh, chapter meetings, which are like uh, town hall meetings. There's 120 uh, different chapters on that in the Navajo Nation, and everybody has uh, the opportunity to vote on various issues. But uh, the carry on of the traditional way is that of uh, consensus. If something is voted on, and uh, it has to be unanimous. It can't be that anybody is going to be opposing something. If there's an opposing vote out of the different numbers of people, if there's one opposing vote, then the issue dies, and they can't continue with that particular focus on that, uh, resolving that issue if there's one descending vote, and it has to be consensus as the way that our, our people still use this uh, government. And so there's a lot of things to understand about why the Dine of today have certain thoughts and feelings about the way that they are governed. They like to govern themselves, but uh, as it is, so much of the uh, sovereignty issue in that has been wavered, and so our people are very much dominated by some of the uh, government rules, regulations, policies, laws, and codes and that that are too excessive. And so b thinking back on the ways that our people have uh, progressed as far as an ideology, it's very important that our young people know history know the history of this country and know the history of this continent. And so when we look at the uh, Declaration of Independence where we have uh, merciless savages, why did they put that line in there? And it, it has a lot of effect on uh, the thinking of Native American people. But I think that if you even look in the world today, there are people out there that are pretty much considered uh, savages because of the way they conduct themselves by taking uh, prisoners and, that and how they treat them how they treat those prisoners. And so it is that uh, when the uh, founders and the early uh, citizens of this country saw the Native American people, they saw that they were practicing a lot of different things. It was a horrible experience for many of the people. And if we understand history and allow ourselves to learn history, we can learn from them, uh, learn from those uh, experiences in our history. And so it's very important to understand the traditional teachings of our people and to understand how, where they came from and why they, what they experienced in getting here because we are what we are because of the way that those people were back then. And so those are the traditional teachings of our people. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching our videos. If you like what you see, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of our uploads. Also, head over to our website, NavajoTraditionalTeachings.com. Sign up for our email list. Okay.